you can go ahead. Perfect. Thank you very much. And uh, good afternoon, uh, everyone. Uh, it's my pleasure with you again today. It's uh, by uh, nine edition of Park Camp. Um, thank you a lot to um, uh, Majid and Shema for all of their efforts organizing this great event. It's one of the events I always look forward to um, every year now, more than once a year, which is fantastic. Um, today, I want to talk to you a little bit about reinforcement learning, which is a topic about recently um, uh, in the context of machine learning. Uh, it, it's one of those innovations that was that were added to machine learning. And, you know, everyone is talking about machine learning, but reinforcement learning has some role in, in some specific areas uh, that I want to you know, tell you a little bit about. Um, so the title is Reinforcement Learning from Weather Prediction to Beating Atari Games, which is what reinforcement learning was used to create a, a system that can be given any Atari game without instructions, and the system would be able to learn how to play the game and beat the game. So games like Pong and that sort of thing, so older games, but, uh, but still very impressive work um, in that particular paper. And if anyone is interested in the academic side of it and wants to talk to me, I'm happy to. Um, I've got my, my Twitter handle here if you want to uh, contact me uh, and ask me about reinforcement learning. Um, so the concept is very simple. So we start with machine learning. As you know, in machine learning, we have uh, a system in which the, 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 the machine is learning to associate between a set of inputs and a particular outcome. So you can think of it in other terms as well, but just to simplify it, we're going to talk about inputs and outcomes. So for example, let's say you have a weather system uh, or weather prediction system that, that will tell you whether or not it will rain five days from today. So today is Saturday, and maybe you're planning something on Thursday, um, although you shouldn't be you know, sitting in, 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 in inside spaces with a lot of people uh, for health reasons. Uh, but let's say you're planning something on Thursday and you want to know if it will rain on Thursday or not. Um, if you think of it in terms of a, of a simple machine learning system, what you have is you have the weather data today. So you're looking at the temperature today, you're looking at the cloud coverage, you're looking at the, all the different um, um, uh, pressure zones around you and the wind. And maybe, maybe you, you, your system will um, somehow through machine learning will learn that the chance um, of raining five days later is let's say 50% based on the data that it has collected from the weather now. And, um, and what happens is you have to wait till Thursday and see whether or not it rains. And if it does rain, you will feed that back into the system and say, you know, you thought it was gonna be 50-50, just so you know, based on the inputs that we gave you on Saturday, it did actually rain on Thursday. So then it will adjust its prediction and hopefully next time um, it, it gets this, um, and hopefully next time it is presented with the same inputs and in the same situation, uh, it will, will increase the prediction. Maybe it will say instead of 50%, it will say 60% because now it has a piece of data that says five days later it did rain based on this on, the, on those inputs. So that's what machine learning does is it's slowly trying to learn and, and improve its predictions so that they are closer to reality so that they are closer to what we call the gold standard. So whatever you give it as a gold standard or the correct answer, it will try to get its predictions closer to the correct answer. Um, another way of thinking about it, it's trying to reduce the error. So there is always an error in its predictions and you're trying to reduce this error. Um, but what's important to note here is that um, in the machine learning system, if we look at Saturday here, have stay as our last day, uh, but the, uh, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and things were happening during those days, right? Uh, the weather was changing during those days. In the machine learning system, it doesn't care about the data in between. It's only looking at the input, which is the day, and the output, which is, is it gonna rain in five days or not? But the re reality is, if you think about it, how would a machine learning predict, a machine learning system predict that it will rain on Thursday? It is probably tracking something like maybe a big cloud. And it's assuming that this cloud, based on the wind conditions and the, and the pressure zones, the cloud is going to be moving closer and closer and closer. And on, on Thursday, the cloud will be right on top of where you are right now, and it will rain. So that's how it will make the prediction, right? But if you think about it in real, in real life terms, what if next day you wake up on Sunday, and you see that the cloud is now moving away, right? 
Now, in a typical machine learning system, you wouldn't learn anything from this fact. So you saw the cloud moving away, but you don't learn anything. You say, I don't care what happened to the cloud today. I'm going to wait till day five or Thursday, and then I'm going to adjust my learning. But with, 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 with uh, reinforcement learning, what we're doing is we're tracking sequences of data. Instead of pairs of input and output, we look at a series or a sequence of pieces of data. And then finally, the, the last piece is the outcome at the end. So what we're doing is we're taking all of the changes that happen throughout the week into account when we're learning. So if um, today we predict that, they, that there is a 50% chance it will rain on Thursday. And then on Sunday, we look at the weather again. And now we say, oh, you know what? Actually, the chance it will rain on Thursday is only 20%. So what we can do is we can take this reduced, uh, reduced uh, probability and learn from it uh, based on the data we got on Saturday. So we go back to Saturday and you say, you know what, when you look at the weather on Saturday, you thought it's gonna rain on Thursday by a 50% chance. Actually, you should reduce that chance because the next day, the chance of raining on Thursday was lower based on what happened to the weather the next day. Uh, because we assume that those things are related, you know, like the, the, the cloud is moving around. So um, on, on Sunday, um, it, it's moving to in the wrong direction. Uh, 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 compared to what we thought it's, it's going to go. And so we go back and, and learn from that. So that's the idea there, is that you're learning based on the intermediate steps as you go along before you hit the final step. And what's, what, what makes reinforcement learning interesting, even more interesting is, so this is a simple example, because here what you're doing, you're just, you're just trying to predict what will happen in the future. So we call this just prediction, right? But sometimes what you're trying to do is you're trying to control the environment. Now, we cannot control weather, but there are situations where you can control things. So just in simple terms, um, let's say that you can take actions to change the future of the weather. You cannot do it with weather, but you can do it with something else, like such as a video game or um, a chess game. So let's say you're playing a game of chess, and you have your pieces all in, in certain positions, okay? And you predict based on the current set, uh, current positions on the board, that maybe the chance of winning is 40%. Um, but if you take this action, you predict that your chance of winning will go up by uh, 10%, it will become 50%. So you say, okay, this will improve my chance of winning. So I'm gonna play this piece. So you play it, the player will respond by, by, with, with a counter action, right? So you're playing against another, maybe you're a computer and you're playing against a person, right? And you're trying to train this computer so that it gets better at beating people in the game. Uh, so let's say it takes this action and it thinks that taking this action will put it in a better position. But after it, it took this action, that player did something that was very devastating, that produced the chance of winning down to 10%. Now, next time, you're not going to do this action, even though you don't know the final outcome yet. You don't know that whether or not you're going to lose or win the game because the game hasn't ended yet. But you already know that the action you took was not a good action. So this is another example of where, where we added the component of actions. So what you have is you have a, um, the, 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 the player, the, the computer player, the, the artificial intelligence player, we call it an agent, we call that an agent. So you're an agent and what you're trying to do is you're trying to try different player plays that you can, you can play or actions you can take. So you try the different actions and see what happens when you take those actions. Are they taking you closer and closer to winning or are you taking you away from winning? And if the action takes you away from winning, next time you're gonna try to avoid that action, and prefer an action that will take you closer to winning. So that's how it works, okay? So it's a very simple uh, principle, um, but it, it has very deep and profound implications in terms of learning and in terms of what you can do with it. So this is what was used to, um, to train systems like AlphaGo, which was very famous. It's a Google system that beat the, um, the top player in, in the game Go. It's a, it's a Chinese game um, that is very popular in China and Korea and, and other um, areas in Asia. And, um, and so what they did is they, 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 they used reinforcement learning, the AlphaGo team used reinforcement learning to, um, to, to beat the top player in that game. Um, and, and, and I think they played five games and, and AlphaGo won four out of five, if I, if I remember correctly. So it was a devastating loss for the top player. And there is a very nice, uh, there is a very nice um, 
documentary about that on YouTube. So if you search AlphaGo, you will find a very nice documentary. And then and they have, there are other alpha systems that they, that they came afterwards. And they're also very nice and they're all very well documented. And this is a team called DeepMind. It, uh, it's a Google team, but it works independently and they are based in London, the UK. So what I'm gonna show you finally is, is this example of where we, what, what you can do to train a, the computer to win at Lunar Lander. So you know the game Lunar Lander. Um, it is where you have a, a, like a spaceship or, or a, a lander that has two legs. So if you look at the bottom here, bottom right of the slide, um, you've got this lander and it's trying to land down here on the ground, okay? Uh, but the way it's trying to do it is by uh, it's taking some actions. So what are the actions you can take? So what you can take in this game, the actions you can take is you can, you can fire the main. So, so this is the main thruster will produce uh, lift or produce, um, uh, you know, like you will fire below. So the, the, the spaceship will go up. And then there are side, side thrusters that are a bit weaker, but they will just reorient space. So if you want to go the right thruster so that it tilts left and you would fire a little bit of the main thruster to go there and then you would fire the right thruster and, and adjust and so on and then you can leave it for to gravity to take you down but if you're going too fast with gravity you might hit the ground hard and crash so you're going to be giving small bursts of um, uh, thrust under you to, to soften the landing i'm sure that you've played this game it's a very very old and very popular game so lunar lander so what i did here is, is i tried to um, teach my system, my agent, to play this game and and land the the ladder softly, uh, softly and perfectly. Uh, so what I what I have is I have uh, a number of actions I can take. I can fire, as I said, so I can fire the main. So I'm gonna point at the actions now. So those are the actions you can take. Let me highlight it. That may look better. So you can take a number of actions. So the actions could be fire the main thruster, fire the right uh, orientation, fire left orientation thrusters, or do nothing. So you just leave the aircraft and let it go down by gravity. Okay. Uh, and the way you would take those actions is, is you have to look at the situation, right? Or what is going on. And so the situation uh, or what is going on is, is all the inputs you have. So the inputs would be here. So you have the X axis of the, of the, um, the spaceship. You got the y-axis, you got the velocity at the x uh, in the x-axis, the velocity in the y-axis, and then you've got the angle because the ship can be straight like this or it can be tilted this way or that way. And then finally, you got the um, what the legs of the uh, spaceship are touching the ground because that's in the end, that's what you want to achieve is you have both legs on the ground and the spaceship stationary. So it's standing still. So that means you want, that's the end. Uh, and then what, you, what, the, what the system will give you is it will tell you if you're getting near the landing pad, it will give you positive rewards. It will say, yes, you're getting points. Um, and if you have a safe landing, you get a lot of points. And the negative reward or punishment is, is when it takes points away from you. And that is if you're using a lot of fuel. So if you get stuck in the middle and you're just using fuel over and over and over again, it will tell you that you're doing something wrong. Or if you uh, if you crash the lander, of course you lose a lot of points if you feed that. And so the the system that I developed has no knowledge at all of what gravity is. It doesn't know anything about gravity. It doesn't know anything about ground. It doesn't know anything about thrusters. It doesn't know anything about x y velocities. Not doesn't know anything about angle velocity. It doesn't know what those things are. All it knows is that here this is a bunch of numbers, and the numbers represent the inputs. And this is the reward you get for taking an action. And you can take one of four actions. And it doesn't know what the actions are. It doesn't know that the, this action is main thruster, this action is left thruster, right thruster. It doesn't know any of that. All it knows is, is you know, it can take one of those four actions. And based on taking those four actions, something will happen, either positive or negative. So this is this is what the system knows and, and, and what it can do. Uh, so I'm going to show you uh, how this plays out. Uh, it's a bit laggy, I think. I don't know if you can see it very well. They're, they're all in, um, on Twitter as well. So we start with uh, the first game that it played. And with the first game, 
with the first game, it, uh, it basically just crashed. It didn't know what to do. It was playing the, the all positions randomly, right? It was, it was trying, you know, thrust, left thruster, right thruster, down, uh, main thruster, doing nothing. It will just alternate between all the different actions randomly and trying to learn what happens when I do that. Um, how, how much reward do I get? And then over time though, after, after only eight iterations, it was starting already to aim at the pad um, because now it knows that it gets reward when it's aligned with the pad. So it tries to keep the, the, the um, spaceship there by using the right and left thrusters and the main thruster to keep it there. But then see it's, it's, it's firing both the right and the left thrusters at the same time to keep it in the middle, but it doesn't know about the landing yet. But what it learned is that if it leaves the spaceship go down and hit the floor, the spaceship will, will break and it will lose a lot of rewards. So now what it does is it's trying to fly away because it doesn't want to fall, right? So, so it, it, it's now just like going the opposite direction. It says, I don't want to go to the ground. That's bad. I will lose. Uh, but then it loses uh, in another way, right? By, by running out of fuel and going out of the game. And so it loses that way. Um, so now this, 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 the computer's going to play the game 20 times now, but still um, it's, not, it's not great. So next we look at after 343, you can see the lander now trying to kind of balance things out. It's trying to go in the middle, but so avoiding a hard hit on the floor. So because still, it's still scared of the ground because it knows that if it hits the ground hard, you lose a lot of points. So it's trying to figure out how to hit the ground without losing a lot of points because it, it must have had some wins. So it knows that it has to go down, but it doesn't know how to do it. So now it's looking much better uh, after 700 times, uh, but still missing the, the goal. It's going outside, right? And again, it doesn't know what it's doing. The computer doesn't know that it's playing Lunar Lander. All it knows is that it's pressing certain buttons and it's getting rewards for pressing them. Uh, if we get to 1,000 times, now it's getting much better, but very slow and also not getting into uh, the target zone. After 2,000 iterations, it was doing much better. And then 3,000 iterations, um, it's just, uh, Ahmed, for it, a it does check, a very good have, job. Uh, one and a half minutes left. Yeah. This is the, the end. Uh, of, um, I hope that you saw that last landing there. Um, does, does the landing show? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so this is after 3, 000, playing the game 3,000 times. Um, so that's the end of my talk. Thank you very much for listening. I hope that it was interesting.